Mark Rogers, TV Voice of College Football. We bring you the best in discussion, debate, and analysis each and every day on the game we all love. Help us build the channel by grabbing the Amazon link in the description section below or in the description section below on any of the videos. Enter Amazon, do your regular shopping right there just using that link. Also, join us on Patreon at the Voice of College Football community right there. And we have a lot of fun and interesting stuff in store. All right. Each and every week, this is a different segment than anything else you'll see in regards to X's and O's breakdown. We've done this several times with Justin Tatavio from uh, Iron Man Football and also State of the U, breaking down the X's and O's. I learn a ton, so lock it in. We're going to release this video each and every week at the same time, so I will announce that at some point in the next few days when you can find this each and every week. Justin, how are you doing today? Great, great. Uh, we're in the middle of spring football, about to wrap it up uh, at the high school level here, so I'm um, kind of got my mind wrapped around a lot of stuff. Oh, I hear you. <laughs> I've got all sorts of uh, yeah segments of my mind wrapped around different things and trying to untangle constantly. So uh, we talked about this uh, before we started to record. Uh, any of us who grew up playing football at whatever level, uh, grade school on through high school and so forth, uh, got used to uh, running pass patterns. If you were um, in organized football, uh, it would get pretty specific in regards to the, the yardage, the, the yardage. And then you would take that to the uh, street and you would say, you know, run down to the, uh, the, the corner of the bumper of that car and then, you know, cut a hard in and you do your outs and your ins and so forth and so on. And then I remember uh, Eric Coriel. So Dan Fouts in that great San Diego offense uh, broke it down to the point at which you had mentioned and alluded to before we started to record where it was a precise number of steps and the timing had to be precision perfect. And we've certainly got away from that because of a lot of uh, practicalities in the passing game and letting these athletes figure out and respond to what they're seeing. Yeah, and I think one of the big things has been free agency. And I think with um, with the requirements of the draft and having to be able to get rookies to play right away between the financial impact that they have, but also, um, you know, Younger guys are going to have a little more athleticism to them. You know, they haven't been broken down. They haven't um, maybe encountered, you know, the hardships of family life and stuff like that where, you know, young guys are still training. They're still able to train all the time, and they still have that um, athleticism to them. So uh, you want to get those rookies on the field, but then you also want to be able to bring in free agents or maybe even sign guys in the middle of the season. Well, if it's extremely complex down to, um, you know, a, an inch – where the play isn't going to work and blah, 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 you know, you, you know, and the play calls are 15 words long. It's going to be much more difficult for guys to come in as a mid season, pickup, trade a free agent, or, you know, basically any draft pick for a long time in the bill Walsh type systems, the West coast offense guys weren't playing for two or three years. Well, that's half their contract. Now when there wasn't free agency, it didn't make a difference, but now that there is, um, and it's so prevalent contract caps are being put on the, you know, the year limitations and, Guys know, even as a player, you may not be able to uh, fill out that entire contract because they just cut you anyway. Well, you know, that became the system of how do I get the most out of people the quickest? Letting people use their natural ability was the best way to do so. All right, good stuff. So this applies uh, specifically to the passing game because it's the most complex uh, aspect of football where we need uh, three units to work in sync to make it all happen. So kind of explain how uh, what you're talking about has revolutionized the passing game and the approach. Yeah, and so um, <clears throat> for a long time with Bill Walsh, we'll use this side here, you know, it would have been exactly the amount of steps to a yard down to an inch. You would put out cones that would match your exact route, right? So as you were practicing, each route would have cones that put you right into a certain spot. You would say race it go, and within, say, 2.5 seconds, you'd have to be able to fire that ball, and everybody had to be in the exact spot that they were in, right? Um, if you weren't, you weren't going to play there very long if you were playing there at all, right? And if the quarterback couldn't put the ball in that exact spot in that amount of time, uh, we were, you know, you're in a lot of trouble in the West Coast offense. Well, what is going on, you know, nowadays is the idea of open grass reads. And so, um, you know, the best way to explain this would be using the phrase six. Um, if you've read Chris B. Brown's smart football books, you know, six was in there from Mike Leach, and that was Mike Leach's four vertical play. Um, the idea used to be everybody would just run four verticals, 
and you would hope to have the right coverage behind it, right? If you didn't, uh, maybe the quarterback would run, maybe throw the ball away, maybe there's a check down to a back. But now every part of it is an option. So, yeah, it's your first idea is that they are going to attack the number, the hash, the hash, and the number. But there are breakoffs at all times in the open grass read. Most people would say that, you know, if your cornerback leverage isn't what you like, he can break off inside or outside or run some form of an out, right? So it's a comeback, a hitch, a comeback, or an out to go along with that fade. So you're adding all these different layers to what you could possibly do. Now, a lot of people would tell that guy out there he cannot run a hitch because he's going to run a hitch or, you know, he might run an inside and he needs to break off outside. He can run inside and he can break off outside to keep the defenders away from each other. So the idea becomes, how do I break these down? Well, you know, that's what Mike Leach made very famous, right? It's the same play, but you can throw it all over the field multiple times and it can look like a completely different play each time. And so that's whether you're an out guy or a comeback guy uh, and then they run hitches. So that, and that was mostly what the open grass street concept became um, for a while. And now it's just taken on like an entire life. So a few things come to mind. We see it um, uh, on average, I would say about once or twice a game where uh, the upside to this is astronomical. As you explain, you let the athletes uh, determine based on what they're reading from the defense and the open grass in the field to determine where the, the space is to, to make the play and make the connection. The, the downside is that the quarterback and the wide receiver obviously have to see the same thing. 98% of the time they do. And uh, they make the right read and connect versus uh, sometimes uh, I'm sure the defense is and the defensive coaching has responded to this in a way uh, that's not certainly met it uh, uh, to a degree in which they they uh, have the defensive back try to play in between and make it difficult for the the read to happen. And as you mentioned, it's it's imperative that you keep these defenders away from each other because they're so quick. And then they, you see many interceptions happen when a guy plays off his guy, sees it coming and breaks off his guy and uh, picks off the pass intended for somebody else's receiver. Yeah. And I think what um, mm -hmm. a lot of people will do is kind of trap you into different coverages to where it lines up looking like one thing. These guys are so fast. It looks like there's one high safety and all of a sudden the guy from up here just bails deep, right? And he starts playing deep and he cuts something off that's kind of an immediate throw. I mean, they have so much analytics, so much data that they can break down that it does become difficult. I think Phil Longo on the office corner at UNC using the phrase scream and blur, scream from open, blur of another color becomes very simple. Um, you know, is that blur of another color here? So like, it, let's say for instance, you know, you're running that six route, but he's over the top of it, right? You'd be considered capping it it's because you between coverage, alignment, and personnel, I can't get over that ball, right? That guy's going to be over the top of me. So I know I'm going to have to break that down somewhere in here, right? I'm going to settle down in space. So now what does this guy do and what does this guy do would be your question, right? He's not going to be able to get across there unless he's the greatest person of all time. So more than likely, let's say he brings pressure. Now I know it's only going to be him. So as you take your drop, right, you're going to be looking – I know that I'm not going to throw this. I know it has to be that based on pre-snap leverage. And now I'm looking for him. If he drops middle of the field, which he should, I can still hit that route. If he drops a hook curl, uh, I can't hit that route, right? And then I'm off that person. So if I decided I don't like that and I like this and all of a sudden it's not there, I have to have something else that I can do. The other thing that I can do is throw to the back of the flat, right? And so that becomes your – this might be – let's say he is going to run vertical. That would be your rhythm route. This would be your read route. I'm going to read this guy right here. Then that would be my rush route. If I'm rushed or my last option, I swing and throw that out, right? And, um, you know, that's really the reason why Phil Longo has his quarterbacks back up three steps as opposed to take the typical drop where you're sideways. He has his guys back up three steps really slowly. It's not like getting anything fast. It's like a quick little, like, step, step, step um, so that they can see the entire field at once. Justin Tatapio on the line uh, from Ironman Football. You can also join him on uh, State of the U, breaking down the X's and O's. All right. So um, any wrinkles, any uh, nuances, any innovations to this that you've seen over the last few years? Yeah. One of the things that's been really fun with it, um, at least as an offensive coach, probably not as a defense coach, is now, um, as opposed to calling quick game concepts, 
We just let our quarterback look, see it, and tag it. So, for instance, with this cornerback leverage, right, he's off, and that's a seven-yard hard deck. So he's off. He's probably at five yards, right? He's outside leverage. The odds, right, of him making a um, play on the ball are slim to none. It's going to be very hard. So what I would do is I would tag him on a slant. Now, he knows he's got, he can't run a hitch because he'd be in the same traffic. So he's got to see that tag, look over. He sees that it's a slant tag. He knows he's got two options. We can either tag a rub route, which means he runs an arrow, or he just continues on to his vertical path that he can't break off. So we can either tag an individual slant, maybe you slap your hip, right? When we want to rub, rub your hands together. So I look over, rub my hands together. Now I know this is what I've got. It's all very simple. You know, you could do it. Anything on the face could be deep. Anything on the chest area, maybe it's a hitch. Maybe anything on the leg area is a slant. Um, anything on the arm is an out. So that way I'm not always touching my wrist. I'm touching my hand, my wrist, my elbow, my forearm, my bicep. I'm touching all over down my arm, right? And that makes people see that. And they're like, well, I've seen five different hands, so he's still running it out. It doesn't make any sense. Right. That's the whole point is that we've got a system that we're doing. And obviously, we're hoping you don't know it. So we can check this as a rub. And that's giving our guys a lot of options. We used to call a rub route. Well, what if you don't like what's there, right? What if you do get a corner leverage here? You get a linebacker here and the safety's down in the box, too. Now you have a bunch of whole traffic, but I'm stuck with it, right? And I don't want to be stuck with it. So it's almost like a pass-pass option kind of in the RPO realm of, you know, you don't want to be stuck in a run, so you have an RPO. You don't want to be stuck in a pass, so you have this as a, as a viable option for you. And we're able to kind of check out of it based on what kind of leverage and coverage that we get. So, Justin, based on what you've coached and what you've also seen at uh, high levels – what is the most difficult aspect of any of this for the quarterback and the wide receivers to figure out or develop? I think for the quarterback, it's seeing what, what actually is open. So what constitutes open for you? I um, mean, communicating a consistent language. That's where Dub Maddox has his books. He has one that's called What is Open. Um, he has adapter or Die and he has Helmet to Headset. Those are opening up the minds of coaches because he uses a lot of eye discipline and a lot of cognitive training to be able to use similar terminology and focus. Um, and and that, that terminology, that eye discipline, you know exactly where you're looking. You're looking at this hard deck line. If you have two guys behind it, that's covered. That's two shell. If the see this corner is also back, now that's a three-man shell. If this corner is also back, that's considered four, right? So I know if I got four guys above the hard deck, I'm not throwing a deep route. There was a game Miami and Virginia this last year. Virginia kept putting guys at 12 yards. Miami kept throwing deep fades into it. That makes absolutely no sense if you're using the common terminology, if you're using eye training and cognitive discipline, and if you're using a system like open grass reads where I'm basically tagging guys. I'm calling six, but I'm tagging guys off of it to do anything that I need them to do. Now, they make sure they can make their checks and the different adjustments. If you've got no safeties in the middle of the field, let's say they're playing here, my quarterback should be able to say, that is middle of field open, call low foe, middle of field open. If you don't call a post, you're pretty much on the bench, right? So that's the kind of stuff that you have to talk to. Hardest part would be getting on the same page and then having route replacement. When we talked about, I can't run a hitch here if I'm running an arrow route there because I'm going to bang them into each other. I can't call um, the 10 yard out here if he's also going to run a comeback. Understanding from the players and the coaches route replacement, that's another big one for what, what we do. So no longer is the wide receiver the most isolated position on the field, just doing whatever they uh, call in terms of a pattern for that particular position. Uh, but they have to work. Uh, yeah, they, they have to work together. Uh, it's fascinating to me to uh, study and just kind of observe the evolution of football from way back in the 40s and 50s, let's say, from uh, brute force, strength, more talent, to the coaching taking over in terms of, well, we need to create an advantage and be smarter than the other team, but we're going to do it based on what the coach's play call is, and we'll determine if we gain that edge. And then now we're into a place where uh, the coaches have to be smarter than the other coaches, but it's a pre-planned before game, obviously there are adjustments made during the game, but it's it's basically what you're teaching the players to do and uh, be able to implement on the field. Yeah, I mean, final note, uh, I call it trust-based coaching, TBC. And what that basically means is I trust myself that I have coached you 
and I have taught you well enough using little huddle playlists and installs and during practice. Monday through Thursday is my time. Friday is your time to shine. And trust-based coaching is now it's your time to go, and I just let the guys go and do their thing. Justin Tatavio, join him on Ironman Football, State of the U as well, as he breaks down the X's and O's and uh, joins us each and every week. Justin, it's always a learning experience. I enjoy it. Uh, it's good stuff. I appreciate it. Thank you.